Bella with Locks and Locks of Hairstyles, and we just got done highlighting my hair. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it, just, and it's really cheap. It costs like pennies. So here are a few things you're going to need, and I would say it's probably $15, $20 initial investment, and it lasts for a very long time. So you're going to need some foil. I bought this at the, at the beauty supply store. You can also use regular tin foil. But this is a little, if you think you're going to dye your hair a lot, this is a cheaper way to go. So it comes in a long strip like this, and I just stack them all up, take it to the end of my counter, and rip it so that I have these half sheets to work with. And then I set those aside. I'm going to need, you're going to need um, brushes. If you, probably just one, if you're only going to weave in blonde. If you want to weave in two colors, you know, you need that many brushes. A rat tail comb. Then I have my bleach. I like to use blue bleach. You can use anything you want, but this tends to not go as bronzy on your hair. I have these two different developers, also called peroxide. One's 30, one's 40. 30 won't lift you as blonde, but it doesn't damage your hair as much. 40 is a little more damaging, but that's how you can get that um, blonde that's like the inside of a banana in color. And then I also use this. I love it. It's red corrector. It comes in this little box with the um, drops inside, and it will give you the proper amount of drops to pour in per how much dye you have mixed up, or bleach, or color, or whatever it is you're using. It takes the bronze away. It will turn your color a little more purple, and then you are less likely to get that um, brassy hair that looks like the color of a penny. This will just take it to a straight, beautiful blonde. So I have my scoop of bleach. I'm going to dump it in my bowl and add my 30 peroxide, two ounces of this. Just read the back of, of the kind that you buy to make sure you have the mixing ratio correct. And then I'm just going to start to stir. And when I have it a little bit mixed so that, these, that, so that the red drops don't go right into the powder, then I'm going to mix in the red. And this is 15 drops per ounce of color. And as you can see, it's starting to turn purple. And purple is good because it will counterbalance brassy hair. You don't want your hair brassy. So just mix that up and you're ready to get started. Now on the hair, it's a good idea to have it a little bit greasy for its own natural conditioner to protect your scalp. So section it off into four sections and leave your part in the, on the sides kind of wide so that no matter which side of your hair you part it on, this, the part line will be covered. Then just pull the ones you're not going to be working with out of, out of your way in clips and get started. Now I've gone ahead and done the back section and the right side because if I did this in real time the video would take way too long for you to watch. But we will start over on this side to give you the idea of, of how to do it. So lift up all of the hair and you always want to leave the hair around the face the natural shade that you're doing. Not just around the face but any of the hair at the base so at the neckline above the ears always leave a section out that you won't dye and then I get conditioner and I paint it onto that strand that I've left out because the conditioner will stop the dye from bleeding through so even if you don't have your tinfoil sealed down as tightly as you wished you had the conditioner will be a nice barrier then go ahead and section off a very narrow piece above what you've just put conditioner on take your tinfoil wrap it over your rat tail comb or anything, you could do it on the brushes too, anything with a straight edge. L put it under that hair, kind of pull tightly on the hair as you release the comb, hold it into place and flatten it against the head and then just paint that bleach mixture on. This is the same way you would do color as well if you wanted to weave in a color. So if I call it bleach, this works with color. Paint it on. At the closer you can get to your scalp, it's going to look better, but if you get too close, it will leave a stripe. It will bleed through and go white all the way to the hairline, and it will look pretty pretty silly. So then fold your tinfoil in half, and then start sectioning off the next piece that you're going to put conditioner on. So every other piece, I am going to leave one the natural shade and dye the next one up uh, the lighter shade. And I am doing my chunks a little bit thicker underneath her hair because it doesn't show as much. So my strands of conditioner that I've left the natural shade are going to be thicker than my blonde strands. But as I move up to the top of her head, I will do them more balanced. But in the back and on the sides, I cheat because it's less damaging. 
Now, this is a re-highlight on her hair. So if you had never highlighted yours at all before, you would want to paint each strand all the way down to the end of the tin foil. But since she's had hers highlighted before, all I want to do is a touch-up. So I'm not going to paint to the end of the strand because it's more damaging to the hair. I know people say you have to paint the color or the bleach all the way to the end, but you don't. Nobody's eye can follow it all the way to the end and it will save you so much damage. So go ahead and paint this strand. Get as close as you can to the root without a bleed through. So eighth inch would probably look the nicest. If you can only do a quarter, do a quarter of an inch. What you don't want though is a mistake where it bleeds through to the strand, to right to your scalp. And it will turn everything kind of yellow and, and you won't like the results at all. So be careful. The conditioner is a good barrier, but be careful. So paint this strand about to the end of your tin foil, depending on whether this is a re-highlight or a first time, and then fold it in half, throw the hair you didn't put color on to the side and close that foil. If you leave the hair inside, it will start to process. As I move my way up her head, I'm going to do a strand where I paint all the way to the bottom, just to bring a little more lightness into her hair. It's up to you how many strands you want to paint all the way to the end. I don't want to make this dye job extremely uh, radical, so I'm just going to do like one per section. So I will just keep looping up the hair if you have especially long hair, kind of hold it there and keep painting until you have all of the hair co covered in the bleach or the dye. And then close your tin foil so you don't have any hair to throw to the side this time. So I've moved to the crown and I'm just going to quickly condition this and then start weaving as I had done before. Now on the sides and in the back, we had been going up her head. If we continued to go vertically up the sides, you know, until you met as a center part, it would look funny when you parted your hair. So I always stop at the crown and I start to do them horizontally or it would be like a continuing vertical up the back. That will give you a much better effect than trying to keep going the direction we were on the sides. So paint these strands in and like I said, I only paint not even halfway down and then I will throw the hair to the side and close that tin foil. Be careful when you close it not to smash it down because it will cause it to bleed at the root. So I just hold the two edges and then I kind of lay it flat on the bottom but I don't press it hard on the root. Just keep going. No, notice that my strands are getting thinner now that I'm up here on top so that it's not as chunky. Just continue working to up toward the bangs, remembering to occasionally paint a strip all the way to the end depending on how light you want your overall result to be. Now as I get to her bangs, I'm going to take the uppermost layer of them and leave those her natural shade because I think it, it looks nicer. It, it doesn't look as extreme if the top layer isn't the, the whitest blonde. Paint the conditioner on those, then take all of the bangs and lift them up. And remember, you want to keep all of the hair, so around the base of your neck and above your ears and against your face, its own natural shade because it looks more, it's going to look more natural that way. And I will paint the rest of these bangs all blonde. Depending on how thick your bangs are, you may need to do more, uh, more foils instead of just the, the few that I'm using. Then close that foil and you're going to look like this for the next 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes you to process. So I get out my blow dryer to speed this up. Now on the sides and back, I use a 30 developer, but on top I'm going to use the 40 developer or peroxide because two reasons, I wanted a little blonder up top and the 40 works faster than the 30. So I use the 30 to give me some time while I foil her head. Now go ahead and check from time to time if you, you can lift up a foil and wait till it's the shade you want. It's supposed to be about this color, the inside of a banana. If you pull it off too soon, it has to go through those orange tones and you'll end up with orange hair. So keep checking until it's the shade you want. Then pull those tin foils off. Uh, again, I don't know how long it will take. It's up to your hair, but just keep checking and make sure you don't pull it off in the brassy stage. Wash it out. Good to go.